So who am I to speak about wind research and to lead the company? I thought I'd share um, a little bit about myself. So I'm a pharmacist by training and I graduated from uh, the University of Uppsala and joined Merck and Company, then the Swedish subsidiary, MSD. And I had, uh, I had the opportunity to work with clinical operations, clinical trial, clinical development, both in the subsidiary, but also in the headquarters in New Jersey and also in regional roles in, in Europe. After 20 years, I decided it was I would like to see how it is to be in a small Swedish company and I joined Index Pharmaceutical. I stayed there for 10 years. It was a super interesting journey, more now starting from an academic project more to a small company now and uh, with the drug in phase three. Then this winter, I again think I should do something else and then the opportunity to come to join uh, Wind Research. And I think now with uh, three or four months it is uh, with the company, I can see that the experience and, and um, both in the clinical development and leadership um, that I have, ha have now is, uh, I'm really looking forward to you sitting in Wind Research. It's exciting to be here and present for you today. Uh, we are a listed company on Spotlight, so this is the disclaimer that this is for information only. So what are we focusing on? So we have the drug candidate Foxy5, and it's a unique uh, substance, and they intended to prevent uh, metastasis to be found. Uh, there is an unmet medical need because the survival rate it drops drastically, drastically when uh, metastases are formed, and you probably know of this. We have it around us, all of us. Uh, there is thus a large market potential for drugs that could prevent this. And FOXY5 is currently in development in phase two, and we are calling the study NeoFox, and I will get back to that in more detail. So um, some more highlights is that the, the focus now with FOXY5, our substance, is to address colon cancer in the stages called two and three. It's one to four. Uh, we have the study going in 25 clinics in Spain and Hungary, and uh, we have an interim analysis planned for the end of this year. And what happened now was that we have some really interesting observations that we did not expect to see. And I will get back to this as well. But it will mean that we're changing our plans a little bit. Uh, so it's uh, important also that we have a novel method and we have uh, patented this, uh, both the method and manufacturing um, uh, method for Foxify, the substance. It's key to do those things. Um, we are also looking into how can Foxify be in other therapeutic areas. We are evaluating that. And the patent uh, strategy is important. It, we have to ensure that we have the patent um, that also extends to getting into a commercial drug product at the end. And we are doing this with an, both an experienced and uh, an efficient organization, uh, including the board of the company. Um, so what is this WINT, which is the name of the company as well? So WINT5A is a protein and it uh, regulates many important cell functions like uh, cell adhesion and, and movements uh, of, of then tumor cells. So you have seen that the primary effect is that we are uh, preventing tumor cells to actually um, moving around and thus causing metastasis. So if you have a low wind 5A expression or a degree, um, it seems that there is actually a progression of colon cancer. We try to illustrate this with two slides here or two pictures and also a flower. So if there is a high degree of this wind 5A protein, the cells stay, they don't migrate as much. But if you have a low expression, they actually tend to move around more and then form more metastasis. Uh, so we're prohibiting the seeds to flow, aw flow away. And um, it's um, wind 5 a you can't give that as a drug, unfortunately. It's not distributed in the body. But we have FOXY5, so developed by Professor Tommy Andersson in Lund. And this can be given as a drug, and it mimics the wind 5 a Thus, uh, in the signaling and function of the protein. 
So we have seen, we have several studies that show that uh, if the metastatic burden you talk about uh, can be re re reduced and even the number of stem cells and stem cells, there are cells that are like more sleeping, you say, but the theory is also that they are actually causing uh, metastasis to be formed. So that's also very important. And we have shown this in in vivo studies, which is in more cell lines, and we have shown it in animal models or preclinical work in vivo. Uh, and you measure different markers. And you can also see that we have done this in other cancer forms than, than colon cancer and can see that it, it affects metastasis of both lungs and, and liver as well. So cancer is unfortunately a big <laughs> problem that affects us. 18 million people get the diagnosis over the world every year. And there are 10 million people dying of the disease. Colon cancer is the fourth uh, most common cancer type and it's more than one million people that get this di diagnosed yearly. And the five-year survival rate is, if, if you don't get metastasis, is, it's 71%. But if you do start to get metastasis, the overall survival after five years, it's only 14% of those patients. So with this, there is actually a major unmet need um, that is treated to avoid the relapse and death of those patients. If you look into sales in the market, so with those one million patients, and it's growing, this this uh, the colon cancer is increasing. And now with the stage two and three that we have, we have approximately 25% of those patients that are targeting. If you look at the current sales, it's more than 500 million US dollars yearly. Uh, so what we have done is to look at tox studies. I'm not going, <coughs> sorry, going into details, uh, but they have shown excellent safety profiles, uh, and we have also seen the kinetics that you look into. We have also looked at the formulation and the manufacturing. We need to ensure that the drug can be given in a convenient and patient-friendly, both uh, for the sites as well or the clinics when it's ad administered. And we are ma manufacturing to the current standards, absolutely. Otherwise, you can't be in a, in, a, in a study. This is the study that we are currently running. And uh, it's a phase two study, which means that we have done the phase one studies already. Um, so it's a quite detailed picture. But the, the main, um, what you should remember here is, is that there's colon can cancer stage two and three patients are diagnosed and they are intended to get surgery and should later then get chemotherapy. So all patients have surgery. And we treat the patients um, prior to surgery and after the surgery. And then you look at overall survivals uh, up to two years. And uh, we have planned to do an interim anal analysis this year. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, looking at something called CT DNA. That's, that's like circulating DNA from the tumor cells. And what we announced in June is that we are going to look at any data, not just CT DNA, whatever, what else we can see as well. Um, and this will indicate how the study should be done. But as said, <laughs> and now in August, we had some really interesting observations. And it came from an investigator who told my, my colleague that hmm, I'm seeing something that was very unexpected on the primary tumor as well, not the metastasis that comes later. Uh, she started to dig into this and look and ask for further details and, and, and data points. And we could then actually tell that we have seen this was called downstaging on the primary tumor. So it's when you talk about the primary tumor and, and lymph nodes around the tumor. Um, and we are, uh, we are receive, uh, collecting further data. We, uh, we based our um, announcement of 100 patients, but we have uh, 120, more than 120 patients in the study. So we collect as many of those reports as, as possible. And we decided then to stop the recruitment of patients. So patients in the study, they are going and they get the treatments and follow up. There's no safety issues to this at all. But to recruit new patients when you know that the sign of the study is not optimal for how to measure those new observations, that you shouldn't do that, not from a patient perspective or resources to use. So we are now 
looking in to see how we could uh, how we could either then revise or tweak the new Fox study. You can change what you are looking at or add more things. I mean, we are still looking at the metastasis proce process, but if we could look at things earlier on, that should be done, of course. We hope to be able to tell you about the plans during fall uh, and then also to publish this later on, uh, the observations. And we think that the potential to to really look at the, the outcome of colon cancer, so it will really help a lot to reduce. We need to reduce this. Now there's the overall survival is, is unfortunately bad. So uh, what we are doing is that we are looking at phase two to th uh, stage two to three with our therapy. And there's a lot of activity going on on patients already having metastasis. So we are in this uh, stage where they have not so many uh, not metastasis at this point of time. We are we could expand to other tumors or other cancer forms which have a low expression of of the Wind 5A or even the others. And we have a research collaboration actually looking into leukemia, which was unexpected or not our first choice, but they have actually shown. Um, results as well. And then we have looking at our patent strategy. As I said, it's important. So those are our key targets now. Um, it is to identify, uh, identify the work with the study and, and really ensure that we can continue with that. So that's the most important piece. I will show you the team. I would love to get more, but I now after three months, with the, four months with the company, I can say it is a very experienced team. It goes for the management team, it goes for the board, and it goes for our key opinion leaders as well. So what we are doing, we are having the substance FOXO5. It's a unique candidate, and we intended to prevent the metastasis to be formed. There is an unmet medical need, as we know that the survival drastically drops if metastases are formed. So it's a large market potential. And we're now in the phase two development. And here are a lot of references if you would like to dig into those later on. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for that yeah. presentation. Let's start and see if we have any questions from the audience. You showed us a quick slide on the current treatment regime um, and, and uh, could you elaborate a little bit what these new findings could potentially mean for the positioning of the, of the drug and, and, and the potential, etc.? Yeah, well, the petition, uh, position, I don't think it has changed that we are to prevent metastasis at this point in time. What, what we have understood, this finding is really to see actually unexpected effects on the primary tu tumor. And it should then, of course, prevent the metastasis as well. So it doesn't really change that much now, maybe, but we need to, to understand more if it could be any other drastically change. But for now, it's actually strengthened what we intend to do. And we have the human data, data from patients for the first time. All right, thank you. Hi, um, possibly a very similar question that has been asked for earlier presentations, but I assume that you're not the only one who is looking into how signaling affect metastasis. So my question is, what other products do you see on the market that could uh, be competitive with yours, and what's your relationship to that? Yeah, well, but to my understanding, and please bear with me now, uh, fairly recently <laughs> with the company, it's actually that what Professor Anderson has developed is unique. So, uh, so cancer as a field is a high competition, but with this signaling and the Wind 5A, I would say we're the only one that are doing it. So I have a question about your new findings with FOXY5. And this new finding shows that it reduces the tumor prior to surgery. Mm -hmm. Is this a common effect among other drugs being developed or already on the market? Well, I, I think everyone is trying really to hit as soon as possible. So we know that when you're diagnosed, you didn't develop cancer the, first, the day before. It has been going on. And, and different cancers are long, 
take a long time to grow, either are more aggressive. So everyone is, is trying to, to treat as soon as possible, I would say that. But it's also a matter of the pay for colon cancer, you should have the surgery, but you know that removing the primary tur tumor is actually the best thing you could do. But then we know eventually that, that even though you could have it could look like the best surgery ever, and then uh, after a year, you could find that you do have metastasis anyhow. So I would say that, that yes, people tr try to, to attack the primary tumor, but it's also a small time. So if you look at treatment guidelines uh, of patients with this diagnosis, they should have a surgery within two weeks. Okay. It takes longer often because of the ward and, and the, a lot of things. So, so three, four weeks, most, in most countries, you get your surgery. So it's a, a short time period, uh, but absolutely, I mean, targeting the primary tumor is something I think everyone would like to do. <laughs> but we are also to say we Foxy Five is very safe, so this means that patient can be treated. Uh, they can still have the surgery. It's not affecting the well-being. So so far, we have seen a very good safety profile, and that helps a lot uh, for this disease when they are they they are ill. And as you mentioned, this new finding was uh, news for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, <laughs> how does it change your financial plans going forward? Yeah, well, well, I think uh, to get data in patients, I mean, that should be seen as a very good sign. Where you have the theories, you have animal models or cell models, animal. It doesn't necessarily tra uh, translate to to actually clinical effects that I think many can see in, in any therapeutic field. So I would hope that they strengthen it. it should. <laughs> and I have a last question to finish up. Um, you've stated that you're looking for a collaborator. So what are you looking for in a potential collaborator? So what? What are you looking for in a collaborator? Yeah, I would think that they. Uh, uh, a partner is probably interesting to see because we have this unique uh, uh, mechanism of action that we are complementary to the research. I would see that it's an oncology company that really understands the, the field and want to add a drug to their, what they currently have. That, that would be my, my guess. Okay, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.